Well, there's no getting away from it. Photoshop is vast. There is a myriad, a myriad of ways of doing every single thing you can imagine. As long as it's got to do with pixels, there's at least three or four ways of doing it. There's no right ways, there's no wrong ways, but there certainly are some effective ways. But more importantly, are there things that as a portrait photographer you might just find a little bit more useful? In these short videos, I'm going to show you some of the tricks and some of the techniques that I've picked up along the way as a portrait photographer. Most importantly of all, each of them is quick and it's easy and it's highly effective. In this particular video, have you ever wondered if you could get rid of those annoying changes in the reflectivity of the surface of your prints, particularly when you're looking at the blacks and you're looking at the whites? I'm Paul, this is Mastering Portrait Photography. So have you ever wondered why when you run an inkjet print in particular of your image and if you've got blacks and you've got whites in your file, you get these really strange changes in the reflectivity of the surface of your print? Well, that effect has a name. It's actually called gloss differential. And all it means is the bits of your print, the bits of your image are reflecting light differently. Well, why? Well, simple. Areas of white, areas of white paper may not have any ink on them at all. Your printer profile probably is gonna give you a little bit of ink onto the page, but not enough to have a massive impact on the reflectivity of the surface. So essentially, you've got white paper showing through. Similarly in the blacks, the only ink that's being laid down is probably pure black or certainly very close to it. Whereas in the rest of your image, you've got yellow, you've got cyan, you've got light cyan, you've got magenta, you've got vivid magenta, you might have light black, light light black, light 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 black, and any other ink your uh, printer manufacturer has developed to try and give you smooth tones. So you can see you've got these three broad areas, you've got paper white, you've got pure black, and then on the rest of your image you've got a myriad of inks. And of course they're all going to reflect the light slightly differently, but you can at least reduce that effect if not eliminate it altogether. And it's really, really simple to do. And every time you produce a file for printing, it's worth doing this final check just to make sure the blacks and the whites are exactly where you'd hope them to be. So what am I talking about? Well, let's have a look at this image. This is the image you saw in that video. And you can see I've got a lot of strong black and a lot of strong white. How do I find out what's pure black and pure white? Well, I suppose I could just grab the eyedropper and click around a little bit. And eventually I discover if I look at my info panel. Uh, let's have a look. There's my info panel. Click on here. Yep, there you go. There's a little bit of black down there. Red, green and blue are all set to zero. And I think there's a highlight here somewhere. Yep, red, green and blue are all set to 255. There's a much quicker way of doing that, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a levels adjustment layer. So if I go down to here where I can uh, create a new adjustment layer, slide down, go to levels. Okay, so there are two broad areas in the levels dialog. You've got the main histogram and your control sliders. They control the black point, the white point, and the mid-tones of your image. If I slide them around, you can see if I want more black in my image, I move that black slider further to the right. Anything to the left, any value, any um, tone value to the left of that, lower than this, is going to come up as pure black. Anything to the right of my highlight slider, anything above this particular value, uh, 227, as I've got the slider, or 222, 218, 209, is going to come up as pure white. But how can I tell which areas are going to be that? Well, very simple. All I do is I hold down the Option or the Alt key, uh, if you're on Windows, and I just hold down on the highlight slider. And there it is. It's showing me immediately any areas that are pure white. And if I drag that in, you can see it's going to show me I'm getting a lot more pure white now. Similarly, if I go over to uh, the shadow slider, hold down the Option key or the Alt key, click on the shadows, and again, it's showing me all of the areas that are pure black. So I now know I've got a huge amount of density in this image, certainly in the blacks, and I've got a lot of paper going to show through in the whites. And what we need to do is we need to eliminate that. Now, if you look below that main histogram and those control sliders, you'll see that there's an output slider. And what does that do? Well, it's easiest to show you on a slightly different file. So in this image here, I've got two layers, just two layers. They're exactly the same, but one has uh, grades on the left-hand side, and one had, has grades on the right-hand side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the levels layer, exactly the same again. I'm gonna just stick a levels layer between those two layers so I can illustrate exactly what's going on. So if I do the same thing as I've just done, 
hold down the option or alt key and drag the highlight slider you can see it's now gradually showing me all of the bits of the underlying layer that are going to turn to pure white okay and if i let go of that you can see what it's doing is it's remapping all of the tones between white and black but now i've got a lot more white so the gradations accelerate up from black through to white i'm going to pop that back where it was i do exactly the same with the shadow slider hold down the option or the alt key you can see it's just increasing the amount of blacks and whites I have. Now let's pay attention to the output slider. The output slider says any tone that comes up through, I'm going to remap a black to whatever point, whatever tone I decide in that output levels box. So in here, in the output levels, let's just put in the value 10 for ease of anything else. And you can see immediately that it's lifted all of the tones in that underlying layer, the left-hand part of my image. It's lifted them all, so there's now no pure black under there. The lightest, sorry, the darkest tone it can be is a value of 10, which is a grey. Let's set that back to zero. And we're going to do exactly the same now with the highlights. Let's set that to, I don't know, 220. And now you can see that on that left-hand layer, the left-hand part of the grade, I've now got no pure white. What I've got is a whole series of grays. Because I haven't changed the lower output level, it's all black on the bottom, but then it goes all the way up to a maximum of a gray value of 220. It doesn't go to white at all. So you can see how I can control the blacks and the whites. And that's the trick. It's as simple as doing that. So if I go back across to here to my file uh, and I change the output level for the black point to let's say five. And the output level for the white point, let's say to 245 or 250, somewhere around there. What I've done is I've entirely remapped all of those tones. Now, if I bring up another adjustment layer, I'm going to bring up the levels, another copy of the levels layer again as the top layer. Now, if I hold down my option or alt key and drag that highlight slider around, you can see I've got no whites in there at all, as you'd expect. If I drag it in far enough, eventually some will start to appear. But because the levels layer that I created is saying the whitest thing I can have is two as a value of 245, I'm going to have to bring that slider in to 245 before any whites start to show. Similarly with the blacks, if I hold down my alt or option key and slide around uh, the uh, shadow slider, the black slider, I'll have to get to a value of 5 or whatever I set in that levels layer below it to, before I start to see any true blacks. So what I've done is I've eliminated using one simple layer. Let me just delete that one because that was only there to illustrate a point. I've eliminated the pure blacks. I've eliminated the pure whites. And boy, do my prints look better for it. You could ask, or rather you could observe, that I've changed the dynamic range of the print. Well, I have. But the way our eyes work is we don't normally pick up on that. And apart from anything else, paper isn't pure white anyway. What you want to do is you want to give the impression, the perception of things being black or white. And what you don't want is pure black and pure white in a photographic print. Well, I hope that tip makes sense and I hope it works for you. It's certainly something that stood me in good stead over the years. If you want to see more tips and tricks, head over to masteringportraitphotography.com, which is a website dedicated entirely to the stuff I've learned while being a portrait photographer. But until next time, remember whatever else. Be kind to yourself. Take care.